What if old style curs replace modern ERS? Well, to find out, we're jumping on F1 2020 and we have, of course, modified the game to give every single car was equivalent to the old style curs. Now, they ran this system from, I think it was about 2010 or so up until 2013. Of course, 2014, we had the current engines come in and basically it's half the power of the current uh, ERSK is what it's now called, um, but it's actually only 10% of the deployment allowed per lap. Now, of course, most F1 cars won't reach a deployment every lap. They only reach the full deployment on a qualifying lap, so that's not really representative uh, of it during the race. But uh, yeah, so but only 10% allowed. So it's a really significantly less 400 uh, kilojoules of deployment allowed per lap, uh, whereas it's four megajoules maximum uh, with the current cars and down to 60 kilowatts of power instead of 120 kilowatts of power So anyway, then you see in the bottom right there you saw already using a bit of overtake and it went straight down So we have also uh, Reduced the battery capacity down to the equivalent of what we're allowed to deploy per lap So the deployment limit is set to what it should be which is 400 kilojoules as I just said uh, Also though the battery has got 400 kilojoules of capacity now I've done that really just because that's probably what they'd run in real life back then I, You know, they're not gonna run a battery that's hugely bigger than, uh, than what they did, than what they were capable of deploying, I should say. Uh, perhaps a little bit, just because, you know, the, the batteries are most efficient, or well, they're not very efficient when they're down to 0% charged, and you ideally want to be able to deploy it all at once. But, of course, you know, I guess you could just apply that restriction. Just say to the drivers, hey, you can't deploy it all at once. The battery's not got enough capacity. You can only deploy half at a time, which probably did happen, I imagine, back then. But, of course, no inside knowledge whatsoever. I will say as well, I haven't changed any other... Uh, aspects of the car so it actually it is the same weight even though we're only using a battery it's 10% of the size the car is actually the same weight so of course you know this isn't perfectly realistic but that wasn't the point the point was to make these cars exactly the same as they are in real life but then we're just going to just change that how much you can deploy um of course it's not meant to be a perfect realistic test as f1 2020 isn't a perfectly realistic game anyway getting to the end of this first lap now then we had a good Solid enough first lap. You can see that we've ran out of deployment in the bottom right. And the AI also are subject to the same restrictions. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're relatively smart with it. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, I can see the AI don't like to use overtake mode once the charge gets below sort of 60% or so. Um, at least with this mod. So I, I, I know that they're quite dynamic with how much to use overtake. Um, but clearly there's some sort of restriction there. Um, perhaps it's because of the battery size. Maybe they don't go below 200 kilojoules of charge. I'm not too sure exactly what it is. But but they do use curves. They just don't actually use the full deployment each lap. Um, just a little forward with the AI. But of course, you know, we've, we've changed their parameters that they're able to use in this race quite a bit. So the fact that they're even using it at all and using it quite cleverly, uh, rather than just using, you know, the whole charge in like the first couple of corners, um, is quite intelligent. And they do also, of course, use it when they need to. So if they're trying to make an overtake, trying to defend, that is when they'll use it more as with the normal ERS. Anyway, then up to P11, coming to Daniel Kvyat. Now we've saved 100% or actually about 80% of our charge. He says he's using a little bit on the exit there, but decided not against using any more. We're going to use the rest of it on the exit of the final turn, see if we can get Kvyat, because we did learn last lap that trying to go on the outside of Alex album was quite difficult. So uh, we're going to try and avoid doing that. We're trying to have a good exit here, taking a lot of curb. Decent enough exit up to Rich Fuel. See there, our curb is deploying really, really quickly. And it's all gone already. Just 400 kilojoules goes very, very quickly. Kind of try and dive on Kvyat here, but regret doing that. He pushes onto the curb. Fair enough. That was a bit of a late move. Luckily, we got damage off for this particular test. So no harm done. Once again, now, let's try and save our curves and really think about it. And I will say, I used to really like curves. Uh, and actually... With the benefit, of, again, the benefit of using this test, using a bit of curves here to try and dive on here. Going to go about 50% of our deployment. I managed to dive on quite nicely. And, uh, yeah, having done this test, I, I still really like curves. And I think what was good about curves before was that everyone had the same. I mean, largely everyone's got the same now. You know, each car does able to, is able to harvest a different amount of energy per lap. It's not quite the same, but... Um, you know, everyone had the same deployment. It was, it was equivalent to about seven seconds a lap. Everyone had the same. Um, and... The beauty of it is that it was visible on the uh, on-screen display for the uh, for, for the race, for the real race. So you could see exactly how much each driver's got and when they're deploying it. Now, you know, that was also with the, with the old style uh, user interface. So um, now it would be hugely better that I presume the interface that they designed these days would be so much better as well. So it'd be so much more, so much easier to keep track of. And it was really tactical. So, you know, if you're significantly faster than the car ahead, you can probably force them to using a bit of curves at the start of the lap while you save your curves for later on in the lap. Uh, <coughs> excuse me and um it meant that you know it was really tactical so then but then by the end of lap if they've completely run out of curves but you still got your full charge actually it's probably a relatively easy overtake and you know contrast that to today's uh ersk and, and the deployment and stuff they do still have an overtake button you know they've still got a deployment button the same as it with the curves here which is it which is why we're able to do this mod so easily with this game um but 
it, it's sort of a, a hidden thing, isn't it? You, you, know, you can never see how much charge each car's got. You can never see how much deployment they've got left per lap or... Or, or, you know, when, when they're deploying, when they're deploying their full power. You just can't see any of that. And, and actually, I think that's a large part of the reason why, why the old Kurs was, was better. Of course, also because it was driver deployed completely. So there was no automation whatsoever. So I will say as well with this mod, that is also what I've done. I've completely switched off the automatic deployment. I'm sure you guys have figured that out already. So it only will deploy when we press the button. I uh, probably should have said that at the top of the video, but never mind. So making a nice overtake there on the outside of Shadow Clerk. Using up all of our curves on the exit, though. Going to try and get up to Ocon now. But he's going to be battling Sebastian Vettel. So we're going to try and get back to those two on the final lap of this race. If we can. Trying to take a nice, easy uh, chicane to get a good exit. But actually, they had a reasonable enough exit. Open DRS. And also, it seems to me, it isn't. But it feels like DRS is actually more powerful with this. Because we aren't deploying, um, you know, any automatically. We've got a very limited amount that we can deploy. So actually, realistically, most straights, you know, well, even if we saved that for an entire straight, you're not, you can't deploy for the whole straight. So actually, most straights, you're not deploying at all. Even the straights you deploy, you're not deploying much. And what it does is it makes DRS more powerful because, you know, previously, say Ocon here, I'm going to open some DRS on him. He's going to get DRS as well. But if he didn't have DRS, um, he could then just deploy his overtake ERS to defend against me. And if I didn't have much charge, then he could quite easily just defend against me with DRS. But of course, you know, taking the ERS almost completely out of the equation because we've just got left with Kurs, um, it means that the DRS is effectively more powerful just because we know that it's just the DRS. You know, there's there's not a lot more that the car ahead can do other than, you know, go up to, to rich fuel, which of course, don't forget, they can't do that in real life anymore. They can't go up to rich fuel. The, the, the fuel modes are completely set. All they can do is use the overtake button uh, to, to deploy full deployment, sort of similar to what we're doing here. And uh, correct to Vash Vettel, are we going to dive on him here? Yes, we are. Coming to the final chicane, trying to break him very late. And actually kept that completely clean. And that was a really, really nice move. That was actually one of the best moves we've done against the AI. So let's watch a couple of replays of this. This is on board Sebastian Vettel. And you see, it looks quite aggressive from that point of view. But actually, I come into view early enough. It wasn't a dive bomb as such. I think it was just a, it was just a late breaking move. This is the, the best camera of it. Breaking really late. You see, just running them out of road there. But actually keeping all, you know, at least two wheels within the track limits there. Really nice move. If I do so myself, coming across the line up into P7. So uh, from the back of the grid, reasonable start there. Because, yep, I, I, I got to say, to conclude, I really like it. I, I still really like Kurs. If it was up to me, I say get rid of automatic deployment completely. Bring back driver deployed only Kurs or ERSK, whatever you want to call it. Driver deployed only. Perhaps double the power to what it is now. So it's 120 kilowatts now. It was only 60 kilowatts in this video and that was what it was in 2013. Double the power so it makes more effect. Also, perhaps double the deployment. Maybe that's a little bit much, maybe a bit less than that. Maybe add 50% extra to the deployment. Because, you know, at the end of the day, these cars have got such huge batteries. That will also take some weight off the car because you wouldn't need such a big battery pack. Um, so, yeah, it's just a bit of a no-brainer to me, really. Not a no-brainer, but I, I do think it would significantly significantly improve the racing and the spectacle of Formula 1. So my vote is to bring back Kurs. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But just showing here then, that there's about a second a lap difference or so between the lap times. So it's not even a huge amount of difference. That's of course fastest lap versus fastest lap uh, for the various teams. There's not a huge difference in lap times, which, which also really did surprise me. Um, I thought, you know, we'd be probably three seconds a lap slower. So only a second lap slower. And it means that you know, the racing is better. It's more, puts more onus on the driver to, to, you know, strategically try and outthink his rivals. I love Kurtz, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and I thank you for watching. Bye-bye.